The companion video, Calculated Fields, illustrates how you can create new fields for pivot tables, but that you have to be careful that you know Excel's rules and don't get meaningless results by accident. This video describes a related topic, Calculated Items. Like Calculated Fields, Calculated Items are easy to create, but again, you need to understand Excel's rules. The word item is used in pivot table terminology to mean one of the distinct values of a field. I have often used the term category instead. So when you hear the term item, you can think of category. For example, in the online purchases data set used again here for illustration, the purchase time field has three categories, that is items, morning, afternoon, and evening. A calculated item is typically a new category. It is often used to collapse several existing items into a new subset item. For example, the purchase day field's items are the seven days of the week, Sunday through Saturday. If you are interested in comparing weekday days to weekend days, two natural calculated items are weekday and weekend. I have already created a pivot table with purchase day in the rows area. Now I will create the weekday and weekend calculated items just mentioned. To do this, I will select Calculated Item from the Fields, Items, and Sets list on the Pivot Table Tools Analyze ribbon. However, note that if an item from a Rows or Columns field is not selected, the Calculated Item option is disabled. So I will select a day in Column A and try again. Now I will fill in the Insert Calculated Item dialog box you see here. Its title indicates that it will be an item for the Purchase Day field. I will enter a name for the item and a formula. This formula looks like addition but it simply means that I want the weekend item to include the two days, Saturday and Sunday. After clicking Add, I will do the same for weekday. When I click OK, the two new items are added to the pivot table. Each shows the sum of total spent over that group of days. However, the grand totals double count. For example, they include Sunday totals twice, once for the Sunday item and once for the weekend item. I could elect not to show grand totals for the columns. Alternatively, I could filter out the individual days. If I want to modify or delete the calculated items, I can go back into the Insert Calculated Item dialog box, select one of the calculated items at the top, and modify or delete. There are a few restrictions with calculated items, as listed in the text box. I will illustrate what happens if you try to violate them. First, I will try to group. It doesn't allow me. Second, I will try to summarize by averages. It doesn't allow me. Third, I will try to create a mix and match of calculated item. The list of fields in the dialog box make it appear that I can choose items from any of them.
However, I'm eventually told that this is not allowed. If the calculated item is based on a field, only items from that field are allowed in the calculated item formula. In summary, calculated items can be useful for breaking down categories into subsets, but you have to follow Excel's rules.